Hi, I'm Anna McLeod from the Division of Medical Education at Dalhousie University. This session is designed to offer a brief overview of case-based learning, both in terms of the educational philosophy that underpins that approach to learning and in terms of the practicalities involved with case-based learning. At the end of this video, you'll be able to describe the educational philosophy of case-based learning and discuss how the principles of case-based learning relate to your teaching in a medical education context. Let's spend a few minutes thinking about the educational theory that underpins case-based learning. Philosophically, case-based learning is a form of inquiry-based learning. What is inquiry-based learning? It's actually a form of self-directed learning that encourages learners to take initiative in identifying their learning needs and in ensuring that their learning objectives are in fact met. The theory holds that the more involvement or inquiry in the learning process, the deeper the understanding that will be developed. More specifically, case-based learning is a form of directed inquiry. This means that learners aren't simply left on their own to discover. Guidance and resources are provided in the forms of cases, in the forms of objectives, and uh, by tutors as well. In a case-based approach, a case is actually used to stimulate learning and acquisition of knowledge, skills, and attitudes. One of the major strengths of a case-based learning approach is that learning occurs in context. So cases provide the background, uh, describe a clinical situation or a particular patient issue, and give context to that particular problem, enhancing and providing a more authentic learning experience. And because of this, case-based learning helps to promote deeper learning. Learners have the ability in the case-based learning sessions to discuss, apply, and become familiar with the new knowledge that they've gathered. In order to learn more about case-based learning, I've had a conversation with Dr. Alan Purdy. Let's listen to Dr. Purdy on what difference a case-based learning approach will make for us here at Dalhousie University. All right, Dr. Purdy, we're moving towards a case-based learning approach in undergraduate medical education at Dalhousie University. Can you tell us what case-based learning means to you? Yes, I've been involved in case-based learning for the better part of the last uh, 20 years. I originally was involved in problem-based learning, but case-based learning is what I do on a regular basis. In fact, I've carried that out in continuing medical education, both at locally, nationally, and internationally over several years. It's a methodology where doctors learn about patients through cases. Cases are the international currency of medical information and communication. Any doctor in the world can communicate through a case. At conferences I've given at different places in different countries, and despite language barriers and many other factors, cases always come across to the learners as something interesting and exciting. In terms of preparation, the cases and objectives in case-based learning are provided in advance of the tutorial. This means that learners are given time and expected to come to the case-based learning sessions prepared for active discussion. Supporting information then is selected by the case authors and provided to the students in advance. And students may actually have had a framing lecture to prepare for the case. So there is a significant expectation that our learners and our tutors are prepared for the case-based learning session in advance. Great. Uh, in your opinion, Dr. Purdy, what are the strengths of a case-based learning approach? Academically, it's contextual. If doctors can learn in the context of what they actually do, then they can actually learn better. In fact, the, uh, the literature suggests that teaching doctors through problem-based learning, case-based learning, or even didactic lectures really theoretically is no different. But cases bring the uh, learning to life. Doctors learn in context. They learn about a, a problem, a scientific problem, a medical problem, how to solve things and assess people, and come up with treatments based on dealing with human beings. Doctors very much on a daily basis deal with individuals and not with systems. So as a result, it's very, very important that they learn in the context of what they will be doing in the future. In terms of objectives, 
Once the background is provided and the case is given to students, as I mentioned earlier, a period of preparation is given so that students can be appropriately prepared for the case-based learning session. Therefore, it's really important that our objectives are clearly written in outcomes-based terms in advance of the sessions. The objectives of the cases are known so as to guide the students' learning and to frame the discussion that takes place in the session. The students' knowledge of the objectives drive the discussion as well as the analysis of the case. From a tutor's perspective, in a case-based learning approach, the tutor acts as a skillful facilitator and the chair of the discussion so that the objectives of the case are carefully met. Some of the literature around tutors in case-based learning approach talk about expert tutors. When we're referring to expert case-based learning tutors, we're referring to tutors who are actually experts in the facilitation process, and these are tutors who can guide the students with an excellent tutor guide. Keep in mind that students need to have a generalist knowledge base at the end of the MD degree. This means that any clinician and some faculty who have a degree of comfort in the clinical process can be an expert tutor in a case-based learning approach. In terms of what case-based learning groups will actually look like, it will be groups of eight students. And this is very consistent with the educational literature in the area of small group learning. Group work is best done with six to eight participants to allow for diversity of viewpoints, but to make sure that everyone has a chance to be heard in the group setting. So this has been a very quick and high-level overview of case-based learning, both in terms of the philosophical underpinnings of this pedagogical approach, and also in terms of some of the practicalities involved with case-based learning. Feel free to contact me at the information on your screen if you have any questions. Thank you.